morning once again. Uh, this is Quentin Dodd, and uh, I'm the Sunday school teacher for Groves First Baptist Church here in the general class. So uh, we're in. We've been in Romans. We want to welcome you this morning. Uh, this is. Uh, we're getting close to having our church back open, but this morning we're in Romans chapter 11, and the title of the lesson is Mercy to all. So I'll make that a point. Uh, you can find this lesson that is, is printed uh, online if you go onto our website. Um, it is posted, I'm not sure exactly where, but it is, it is posted. You can go in there and if you find that either there on Facebook, then you can look at that and you can spend some more time and review it. Uh, as I typically say, we're going to let the scripture do the teaching. And so I'm going to read. I have the scripture up here. I have, uh, and I'll be reading right from the screen uh, so you can follow along. And we will let scripture do the teaching this morning in, in Romans 11. And like I said, mercy to all. And that's the focal point. So let me review, just basically reviewing uh, chapters 8, 9, and then 10 and 11. Chapter 8 is pointed to all believers as God's chosen elect being secured. If you recall when we uh, read that chapter and talked about it. Chapter 9 is identifying the true Israel, verses 6 and 8, which is by faith, not in the flesh. And chapter 10 was pointed to the Jewish brethren. Remember, Paul addressed the Jewish brethren of the believers in chapter 10. And in chapter 11, which we're on today, is pointed to the Gentile brethren, with the point in both 10 and 11 being to put away any religious pride against one another, as well as unbelievers, even against the unbelieving Jews. For God foreknew who would accept his mercy. For there is one body in Christ. It is God's mercy that allows for the same repentance to salvation, even for the unbelieving Jews. To be regrafted, and therefore put away any religious pride against the unbelieving Jews. For repentance is still offered by God's mercy to all as it is to you, is Paul's message to the Gentile believers and even to the Jewish believers. There is no room for prejudice of any kind. So God's mercy is for all. We get into our lesson in our scripture verses, mercy for all, both Jews and Gentiles. For there is no distinction, and God shows no favoritism, but to all the same mercy. Galatians 2 and 6, and Romans 2, 11, chapter 10, uh, Romans 2, 11, and verse uh, chapter 10, 12, and 13, in Acts 5, 9, and 11, Paul <clears throat> speaks of no distinction between the Jews and the Gentiles regarding salvation. And Paul uses the picture in today's lesson of an olive tree with Christ as the root and his family or his body being the branches. And how some of the natural branches were cut off and some were grafted or adopted in. And how some can be regrafted by repentance and belief. Um, the natural branches, Paul says he was a Jew. He is a Jew. He's writing uh, in regard to his fellow Israelites. Uh, Christ came to his own and his own rejected him. Uh, but so he is talking about the natural branches were cut off and some were grafted or adopted in and how some can be regrafted 
by repentance and belief. So now Jesus had used two parable pictures of God's kingdom. In Matthew 21, 33, 44, and chapter 22, 1 through 14, one being the vineyard and one being the wedding feast, as you recall those two parables. And in both parables, Jesus uses the illustration and says, many are called, but few are chosen. Actually, that's in Matthew 22, 14, where Paul makes that, or, or Jesus makes that statement. Now, the chosen were the ones who believed and accepted the call. In both parables, many of the called rejected the invitation and were cast out, as you recall in both of those, the vine and branches and the wedding feast. And you can read those parables for yourself. Now, today's scripture, uh, we're going to go to Romans now, chapter 11. We're going to begin with verses 13, and we'll go through the rest of that whole chapter through uh, verses 36. So first uh, portion of the scripture, chapter uh, 11, 13 through 18, Paul says, For I speak to you Gentiles. So he's addressing, addressing the Gentile brethren. Inasmuch as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry. Verse 14, if by any means I may provoke to jealousy those who are my flesh. As I said, Paul was a Jew as well as a Roman citizen and save some of them. Verse 15, for if their being cast away is the reconciling of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead. And that is the same as all believers. For all believers. Verse 16. For if the first fruit is holy, the lump is also holy. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. And if some of the branches were broken off, and you, speaking to the Gentiles, being a wild olive tree, were grafted in among them, and with them because or with them became a partaker of the root and fatness of the olive tree. In verse 18, he says, Do not boast against the branches, but if you do boast, remember that you do not support the root, but the root supports you. So Paul is using the metaphor of the um, olive tree, the body of Christ, Christ is the root, and the believers are the branches. In verses uh, 19 through 21, Paul continues then, he says, you will say then, Branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Well, well said. Because of unbelief, they were broken off. And you stand by faith. It's always been by faith. It's always by faith in Jesus Christ. Do not be haughty, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he may not spare you either. Note, salvation is by God's mercy and grace in Christ alone. What Paul is saying to the Gentile believers is make sure your belief. Be firm and steadfast in your faith. Don't be like those that uh, uh, when Jesus was, was walking and there were many that believed for a while and then they left. And remember his disciples asked him, what about all of these? And, and uh, Jesus made the statement, you know, they weren't really with us. If they were, if they had been with us, they would continue, have continued. So don't be like them. <clears throat> Salvation by God's mercy and grace in Christ alone. And then he continues in Romans 11, 22 
through 24. Verse 22, he says, Therefore, consider the goodness and the severity of God. Two distinctions here, the goodness and the severity. On those who fail, severity. On those who fail, who rejected, of course, we know that they will face judgment, eternal separation. But toward you, goodness. If you continue in his goodness, otherwise you also will be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. Verse 24. For if you were cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, how much more will these who are natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree by faith? So you see the picture that Paul is painting, uh, giving them um, an example of the olive tree the virgin olive tree versus a wild olive tree. And the key is belief and faith and repentance, what Paul says. So don't be prejudiced against unbelievers because they can come back by their faith and be regrafted in. Verses uh, 25 through 27, Paul continues and he says, For I do not desire, brethren, that you should be ignorant of this mystery, lest you should be wise in your own opinion, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved. Romans 11, verse 7, and Galatians 6, 16. You can refer to those two verses. Um, Paul is saying that God, or Jesus, has, has come for the salvation of Israel to those who believe and accept Christ by faith. As Paul has said earlier, this is the true Israel, the Israel of faith. These are those who are of the seed of Abraham. So Paul makes this distinction. As it is written, he says, and he's quoting um, the covenant. He says, the deliverer will come out of Zion and he will turn away ungodliness from Jacob. For this is my covenant with them. When I take away their sins, this is a new covenant by faith in Christ, You'll find that in Hebrews 8, 9 through 13. As we've talked earlier, Christ is the fulfillment of the Old Testament, of all the promises and all the covenants. Christ is the fulfillment of all of that. And it is Christ that takes away their sin. And Christ is, he says, the new covenant. And when you read the Hebrews uh, chapter 8, verses 9 through 13, you'll see that now Christ is, was the new covenant because the old covenant did not take away their sin. Uh, so they needed a new and better covenant and it's found in Jesus Christ. So you can refer to that. Romans 11, 28 through 32 concerning the gospel. And remember Paul's flagship verse Romans 1 16 17 it is the gospel that is the power for salvation to the Jew first and then also for the Gentile so the gospel message of Jesus Christ he says concerning this gospel they are enemies for your sake but concerning the election they are beloved for the sake of the fathers for the gifts and the calling of God are irrevocable. And we read, Paul has stated in, in uh, that chapter 8 of Romans, how that the, the, the gifts and the promises of God are guaranteed 
we are sealed. 2 Corinthians 1.22 and Ephesians 1.13 and 14. And it states this, that we are guaranteed uh, the Holy Spirit is, comes in every believer and is the guarantor of our salvation. And we are sealed unto the day of our salvation or the day of our redemption or the day of uh, for, for heaven. So we are sealed, we are secured. Note, concerning the gospel, right now, they have rejected and you have received. But concerning the election, they can repent and be saved and still be a part of the elect through repentance and faith like all the elect whom God foreknew who would choose and accept Christ as Savior and Lord. Romans 8, 29. Uh, we had, we discussed that in, the, in chapter 8, being those whom God foreknew who called. So we, uh, you can reread that. Verse uh, 31, or excuse me, verse 30. Pick up at verse 30. For as you were once disobedient to God, yet have now obtained mercy through their disobedience, even so these also have now been disobedient that through the mercy shown you they also may obtain mercy verse 32 for God has committed them all to disobedience that he might have mercy on all note God has mercy on all that all may receive salvation by the same repentance and faith. And you see, Paul's message here is that it's because of God's mercy. He's established before, it's not by works lest any man should boast, but it's God's mercy on all who would believe and repent. And that's, that's Paul's message to the Gentiles, that's Paul's message to the Jews. So Paul's final comments here in uh, chapter 11 is uh, final verses 33, 36. Paul says, verse 33, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. Verse 34, For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counselor? Verse 35, Or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him. Verse 36, this is the key summation. For in him, Christ, through him and to him are all things. To him, to whom be glory forever. So Paul is, Paul is stating that Christ is the fulfillment of it all. It's by Christ from the foundation of the world, by Christ, God foreknew those who would choose. God has given promise to those that would choose and, and the elect, that we're all saved by the same faith. That's Paul's message. There is no room for prejudice. So the, my conclusion here is let there be no division in the body of Christ. You know, there are different viewpoints on uh, things like election, like chosen, on who the called are, who the church is, Jew or Gentile. But my final note in the conclusion here, and I believe Paul is saying the same thing, for in Christ there is no distinction and as Matthew Henry expresses, the saints in heaven never dispute, but always praise. In conclusion, thank you, Lord God, Christ Jesus, Holy Spirit, the Trinity of God, for your mercy. 
displayed in the gospel of Christ and him crucified. And this is what Paul this is what Paul told uh, the church at the time, uh, the, both Jews and the Gentiles. He said, there are many things that we could argue and dispute and viewpoints, but I'm going to focus on Christ and him crucified. He says, I'm not going to boast in anything except I have nothing to boast about because it is about Christ and him crucified. So, let's offer a word of prayer. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you for your word. And, Father, thank you for your mercy. And I pray for those that haven't accepted your mercy and haven't repented of their sins and acknowledged you as the Lord and Savior that today they would see that they must accept your mercy by faith for salvation. And I ask that this would strengthen uh, the believer's faith. At the same time, make us humble, Lord. Convict our hearts. Thank you so much, Lord. And I pray for those that are listening that need to accept you as Savior, that even this might be the time that they could do that. In Jesus' name, amen.